Aston Villa plus 350. They're hosting Liverpool minus 138. The draw is plus 275. And I was thinking that would have been nice to see Steven Gerrard and going up against his old teams. Mm-hmm. Too bad that he's gone. And I could for, for the life of me, I couldn't remember who was managing Aston Villa for a couple minutes. And then I realized <laughs> it's, it's our U- guy. Our guy. Una a Emery rematch getting re- of the Champions to get League semis from Via Real. Love this it. is a huge match for us, and this is this it's is. Aston, This is this is a good number on Aston Villa with the way that they're going. Uh, as Anthony, as you pointed out early on the year, that this team should be good, but they had a manager who you adored. You had posters of him in your bedroom, <laughs> and now Those they're all posters. down. They're all down, and uh, we're finally seeing Villa unleashed, and they're actually a better team. Who would have saw it coming? Uh, I like Villa. They, they plus played two matches with Unai, right? Or is it three? Um, whatever. I know they beat. I know they. I know that they beat Man United. Yes. Yeah. But, um, and yeah. he's also he also is. And they beat. Is, yeah, they also beat uh, Brighton on the road. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, and he also took Villarreal to the Champions League semifinals last year. So uh, he, he's a pretty good manager. This guy. Um, I like Unai Emery's Asseville on the money line here. Long story short, uh, what do you got for us, Anthony? Yeah, I agree. I mean, this is all about Liverpool too, though. I mean, again, another club that you know finds itself at the high end of players who played in the World Cup. Uh, not as high as some of the other teams, if you look kind of look across their roster, but they did have plenty of guys. Uh, but they've been a disaster away from Anfield this year. They've conceded almost eleven expected goals in six league matches away. The only away win they've had was at Spurs. Uh, a game that was very even and their best chance came off of an Eric Dyer back header that just fell right to Mo Salah. So, you know, that is not encouraging. They've been really bad. Still no Diaz, still no Jota. So like, this is not your normal Liverpool pressing front either. Like they normally get great pressing out of Jota and Diaz when they're out there, but they're not going to get that from, you know, like a Salah and even a Darwin. Um, so there are some question marks for Liverpool here. And uh, Emery has seen this. I mean, he's seen the clock press. He's, he's had experience breaking out of a much better version of it. The team that he saw last year for Villarreal, much better. So now he's getting a Villa team that I don't know that they're that suited to play, you know, Emery ball, but they can definitely break a press. And, uh, the, you know, with the World Cup advantage, I think this is interesting because not only did Emery not have all of his guys at the World Cup, but he just came in. So he gets a full, you know, international break a month long. Yeah, training camp. To train it, but yeah, to basically, it's like an off season essentially. It was damn near almost as long as the off season. You yeah. think about the math. So I have, I love this spot for for Villa at home. Plus a half, plus money. I'm in. Might even money line sprinkle it too because I do think we have a high variance weekend here, just coming into the Christmas period with uh, a lot of these clubs, you know, going from no games to a lot of games really quickly. Arsenal, and Liverpool, Liverpool does play City. It's kind of a tune up into Carabao, but they do play. Uh, a Thursday against the city. So they, you know, could be a little bit of fatigue depending on who plays and whatnot. 